What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check it out Bad Medicine from Formal Ferret Games. It's for three to eight players, ages 16 plus. It'll take you about 30 minutes to play. And in Bad Medicine, this is a party game where you are going to be playing as big drug companies trying to pass along the best drugs to cure various different humorous ailments. It's a party game. It's quick, it's light, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Bad Medicine. First and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet. It's about uh, 12 pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, all the stuff you like to see in a well done rule booklet. Tons of individual play examples. Very well done rule booklet. I have you up and running in no time at all. I can probably teach you the game right now. So, in Bad Medicine, you're going to have a malady in front of you. You're going to have a problem that you need to create a medicine. That will solve. So this one is uncontrollable sobbing every three hours. So you are going to be creating the name of the medicine, then you're going to be creating keywords for the medicine uh, that you will pitch about, and then other people will be trying to uh, ruin your medicine by giving you a humorous ailment like that one down there. It uses multi-use cards, so there will be three different parts of the cards that you'll be looking at. But again, I can help myself. Let's take a look at the components, then we'll get a little bit of the gameplay. So component-wise, you're going to have a, a bunch of cutouts. You're going to have voting tokens, because everyone is going to be voting on which pitch they like the best. So you'll have four different colors, green, red, yellow, and blue. You will know which color you are based on this thing which is in front of you, so other people can know uh, who they're voting for. You'll have the malady token right here, which is completely unnecessary, but a nice little touch, to tell you what problem you are trying to solve. You'll have a Surgeon General, aka kind of a first player token right there. And then you're going to have the stars of the shows, uh, aside from the player reference card, which are right there, which have two players, three, four, and five, eight. So nice that they include that for all different player counts. You're going to have these cards right here. These cards are going to, as I mentioned, have three different things on them. First, they'll have the name up top. You'll be stringing those together to make different uh, different names for the drug. So Estra Stomston, that would be the name of this drug. Also, you're going to have various different buzzwords, which will be right down here. So when you're pitching uh, your drug to solve the problem later, you'll need to stretch that to, to combine that. So libido or armpit hair, or speed, undead, so on and so forth. Last but not least, you are going to have a downside, a side effect on the bottom. So hands unconsciously punch face, itchy genitals, uh, sterili st sterility, uh, you can't have kids. Uh, now, I do want to mention that on the bottom left hand corner you might see an icon like that. That means that if you don't want to play with some of the more quote unquote adult cards, you can easily take those out of your play with the young crowd, which is really nice. So let's go into exactly how the game works. So you're going to have a malady, it's going to be put down right here. Everyone is going to get seven cards. You will make sure that the round is on the correct round. So in this example, round number one. And then you are going to create your drug of choice. Or you're going to create your drug. How you're going to do that is with your seven cards, you're going to use three to create the name of the drug. Uh, you'll put those face down. Then you will have a description, which will be two cards right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So the name of our drug will be, uh, I don't know, we'll go with uh, Estra Strom. Yeah, we'll just keep that. Estra Strom. So we'll put that right down here. That will be the name of our drugs. So those would go face down like that. Next, we're going to use two cards that will define our description of the drug, define our pitch, tell you how they are going to solve the problem of uncontrollable sobbing every three hours. So let's go with uh, gray, nipple, libido, nostalgia. We'll go with libido and nostalgia. So we put those two right down there. And now once everyone's done, you're going to take turns and you are going to reveal the name of your drug first. So our drug is, of course, called, as we remember, Estra Stromston. And it will solve all of your uncontrollable sobbing every three hours problem. So this is the point where you start to pitch yours. So you can pitch it humorously, you can pitch it seriously. Uh, just kind of, you want to decide based on who the audience is, who the other players are. So, uncontrollable sobbing every three hours, we can solve your problem. Because we know that the deepest 
problem that you have is actually all related to nostalgia. Of course, your uncontrollable sobbing is due to the fact that your past was terrible. It all started with Timmy Thompson in third grade who caught you wiping your bottom with your hand and then from that from that fateful day forward everyone called you Poop Hand up until your ex-wife just a couple of years ago. But uh, we will solve the nostalgia problem by digging to the deepest part of your brain and rooting out all of those memories. Also, as an added bonus, it will increase your libido exponentially so you can go form new memories and you can go out and get your freak on all day long. So wipe out your memory, get some freak on, and stop your uncontrollable sobbing with Estromster. So that would be our pitch. So what's now is going to happen is you're going to have two cards left in your hand because as I mentioned, you were going to have Seven. Everyone is going to give you a side effect that they think would be fitting to your drug. So we got hands, unconsciously punched face, and itchy genitals. We are dealing with libido, so this one makes sense. Also, we'll grab, we'll grab uh, two random ones right here. Now, you don't play on yourself for one of these, obviously, so we're just going to pretend that someone just decided to put that in there. And then you will look at them. I don't know why I mixed them up. Uh, that's what you're supposed to do. So we have sudden loss of consciousness, rampant hair growth, and itchy genitals. You're going to pick one of these negative side effects. That person is immediately going to get a point, which is good for them, but you're going to tell everyone how this negative side effect is actually not that negative of a side effect. Well, estrostromson might cause itchy genitals, but luckily for you, your libido is going to be moving so rapidly, creating so much friction, they will itch themselves the old-fashioned way, if you know what I mean. Wink. So don't worry about those nasty itchy genitals. Estrostromson is clearly your drug of choice. So that would be the pitch right there. What you're going to do next is everyone is going to draw back up to two cards in their hand, uh, and then everyone else is going to do a pitch. At the end of everyone having done a pitch, everyone is going to take the, uh, they're going to take what, they don't get their color of voting chip. Everyone's going to vote for which one they liked the best based on seriousness or funniestness or however you want to do it you're going to reveal those at the same time and those will gain you points uh, and how does the scoring work it's actually really kind of simple so if someone votes for you you're going to get two points if someone picks your card you're going to get one point you're going to go over four rounds and whoever's the most points at the end of four rounds will be the winner of the game now there is one more thing that i forgot to mention how do you replace this card and what can get interesting is that the card that's getting replaced is actually going to be the nasty side effect. So the nasty side effect would go back up here and what can happen sometimes is if there are ties you could potentially have two problems to solve and that's when things can really get humorous and uh, things can really get kind of interesting. But that in a nutshell is how bad medicine is played. Alrighty then, bad medicine from formal fair games. One of my final thoughts, go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. Big one is that this is a party game. This is a very light party game. There's not much strategy at all here, which is going to be a turn off to some people. So if you're looking for a more gamey party game, this one might not be for you. Another con that I had with this game, take it with a grain of salt though, is that it's one of the games where you start going to the higher player counts at five, six, seven, and eight players. You're actually just going to be making people be on teams. Now I normally slam games for this because I just don't like that. However, this game actually makes it work to a degree. And I'll talk more about that in the pros, but it is something that I did want to mention. Another comment I have, this is a big one, my wife didn't like this game for this specific reason, is that if you don't like to be up in front of everybody and trying to make everyone laugh and just talking in front of people and trying to be humorous, this one is not going to be for you because you will be having to think up things that are funny and speaking to everyone and trying to talk on the fly and some people just don't like that in their games. Some people find that very stressful and if you find that very stressful, this game is probably not going to be for you unless of course you're playing the team variant because then you can kind of get around that. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in the pros. Any other cons that I have with this? It's a party game, it's light, feels like a mass market game to a certain degree, which are you know not really bad things to some people. Moving on to the pros, Bad Medicine is a lot of fun and it is funny and that's all you really need to know about that aspect of the game. Component wise, components are great. You got reference cards. I love the fact they even included a co-op two player variant. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's very fun, but I didn't mention it in the cons. Why did I mention it in the cons? Because they didn't put it on the box and I love them for doing that. Too many game companies just try and shoehorn that two players on there. And this game 
didn't try to do that. That was just like an added little bonus. Like, hey, there's a two-player variant here. Maybe it's good. I personally didn't like it, but you might like it. Uh, another pro that I had to this game is the fact that there are adult humor cards in the game, but they're I easily identified so that you can go through the cards and quickly take them out if you are playing with younger audiences, which is another pro of this game, that this is a great family game. It's humorous, it's fun, and if you take out those cards, it's not really that inappropriate. And, and it's very simple for kids to understand, and they can do the pitching, and uh, I, I definitely would recommend this as a party game and as a family game. So, I mentioned a little bit earlier about, on the con side, how when you get to five, six, seven, eight players, you're going to have to team up, and how normally I hate that, but this, this game, it didn't bug me nearly as much. And there's one big reason for that, and I actually kind of liked it more with the higher player count, because it ups the ante. So how it works when you have a partner is one person is going to form the drugs. They'll make the name of the drug, they'll, they'll put down the ailments, and then one person is going to pitch the drug and they don't know what they are pitching so they really have to think on the fly and that creates really humorous situations I mentioned my wife did not like this game she did like hanging me out to dry though and creating just insane drugs that I had to try and shoehorn and yes I've said that word twice in this review and that I had to try and, and make work for the malady and I like that an awful lot and it was fun but some people are going to be a little bit turned off by that but uh, I personally enjoyed that. So great components, very enjoyable, liked it at three players, liked it at four players. I like the fact that there's not a judge, that everyone is judging because a lot of games do that, a lot of party games do that, I'm even guilty of that where one person is going to be the judge, and they are essentially removed from the round. But in this game, everybody gets to vote because you have the pills, and I like that concept. So overall, Bad Medicine, I really enjoyed it. If you were in the market for a party game, this is definitely one I recommend checking out. Uh, Bad Medicine, Formal Ferret Games, I can give this one a positive recommendation. A lot of fun. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know, Medicine, do you take any on the regular? For me personally, not, oh yeah, I take allergy medicine every day because I'm allergic to my giant 160-pound St. Bernard uh, that I was stupid enough to get. Uh, but other than that, I really don't take too much. I, I do have some Adderall that I pop every once in a while when I really need to focus on my homework, but it's okay. I have prescription. Uh, I have ADHD. You couldn't tell. Uh, but yeah, so medicine. Do you take much medicine? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.